Okay, so in this video, we will consider another application of the central limit theorem. In this video, though, we will sort of go backwards with respect to the other previous two videos. We will be given a probability and then ask how large of a sample should we take to meet this given requirement. So suppose we have the following situation. Suppose we have a quarry, so we have rocks or stones from a quarry, and Suppose that, on average, if you collect a lot of rocks, you can find the average weight. On average, a rock will have a weight of 20 pounds. And suppose that it was determined that the standard deviation of the weight is 3 pounds. What if we say we take a sample of n rocks and we compute their average? So we could write xi, where i can be the first, second, and so on rock. So xi will be the weight of the ith rock. So we pick a rock, we weigh it, so we find its weight, so that would be x1, the weight of the first rock, x2 would be the weight of the second rock selected, x3 the weight of the third rock, and so forth. And suppose we sample n rocks. So we have the weight of the first rock, the weight of the second, up to the weight of the nth rock. And suppose we're computing the average weight of our sample. So we are interested in finding the average weight of the n rocks that we have just weighted. So that would be the sum of the individual weights divided by how many rocks were weighted, so over n. And what if we want to guarantee ourselves up to an error that the average meets a given requirement? So suppose we want the following, and the question will be then, how many rocks do we have to weigh to meet this requirement? So suppose we want the following, we want to meet the following requirement. So here's the question, how many rocks do we have to weigh so that we are at least say 85% certain that the average weight obtained is at least, say, 19.7 pounds. So this is what we want. So we sample n rocks, we weigh them, then compute their average, the average weight, and we're asking how many rocks should we have to weight so that we are at least 85% certain that the average weight obtained will be at least 19.7 pounds. So here the unknown is n. Now let's just rewrite this really concisely using proper notation. So here's what we want. So we want the average weight, so that's x bar, to be at least 19.7 7 pounds, but we can't be certain. And the question is, well, we want to be certain up to what percentage, and we want to be at least 85% certain. So we want the probability of this event, so the probability that the average weight obtained exceeding 19.7 pounds, 
we want to be at least 85% certain that this is met. So the probability of the average weight calculated exceeding 19.7 pounds, we want this to be at least 0 0.85. So that is the requirement that we are setting ourselves. And therefore, well, you see now this is a backward problem. We want, or I should say we know, our target probability. And we're asking for the sample size. How many rocks do we have to weigh? So the question is, what must n be equal to so that the average being at least 19.7 pounds, the probability of this event will be at least 0.85. Well, the first step is to find our distribution. right? Every, one, every time you have a probability about a random variable, you have to find the corresponding distribution. And here we'll have to make an assumption. right? Our x bar being the average of n random variables, we want to use here the central limit theorem. But we only can use the theorem if n is above 30. And we don't know yet what n is, so if we don't make that extra assumption, that's it, we can't go any further. So here, we'll assume for the time being, so we'll say if n is above 30, then we can use the central limit theorem, which says that the average weight will be following approximately a normal random variable. The mean, if you remember, is the individual mean of each rock, so 20 pounds. And the deviation is the deviation of each rock, so sigma, which is 3 pounds, over, because what we need here is the deviation of the average. So this will be the deviation of each random variable, each rock, over the root of n. So it'll be 3 over root of n. And this is by the central limit theorem. But we need n to be above 30. So after we proceed and we find the value of n, if it is less than 30, then we have to go back and say, our work is meaningless, we were not able to apply the central limit theorem. But if we do get an a, a value of n that is above 30, then this is OK and everything works out. So let's go back to this now. right? We want the probability of x bar being at least 19.7 pounds. But of course now, from the central limit theorem, we have our distribution. But it is not standard, so we have to first standardize. So the probability of, we subtract the mean, so x bar minus the mean, which is 20, 19.7 minus 20, and we divide by the standard deviation, 3 over root of n, 3 over root of n. And this has to be, that's what we want, at least 0 0.85. All right, so we took a normal random variable, subtract the mean, divide by the deviation, and so this is, once again, the standard normal distribution. And if you look here, well, 19, we can compute it here, 19.7 minus 20, gives us negative 0.3, and this is divided by 3 over root of n. So it's negative 0.3. But remember, if you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the inverse. So multiplying by root of n over 3, and negative 0.3 over 3 is negative 0.1. So we have negative 0.1 times the root of n. And now we're good to go. We have standardized. So the probability ends up being that z is at least as big as negative 0.1 root of n. And we want this to be, again, at least 0.85. So now we have what's called the inverse problem. We have standardized. 
we have the probability and we want to figure out the corresponding z-score. Let's draw the distribution table and split this up into 85% and 15% to get a feeling for what's happening. Let me just move this for a second. Oops. So let's now go on to a second page and let's just look at where we're at. So we're trying to find n and we have the following equation after we standardized. The probability of the standard normal to be exceeding negative 0.1 root of n, we want this to be at least 0 0.85. Let's draw the table for the standard normal distribution and figure out how we can then solve for n. So we have our normal distribution. And we're looking for the area to the right of a negative score to be at least 0.85. So this is 0. Our z-score is clearly negative. Root of n is positive. So our z-score will be somewhere here. And now let's find the actual value that splits up the distribution in 85% to the right, 15% to the left. So the area to the right, that's what we have here, the probability of z being above this point, so the area here, we want the area of this part to be at least 0.85. Now we'll find the z-score where it's exactly 0.85. Well, if the area to the right of this score is 0.85, then, because the total area is 1, that leaves 0.15 on the left. So now we have the probabilities, and we'll look in our table to find the nearest probability of 2.15 to find the corresponding z-score, which we know is negative, so we use the first side of our distribution table. And again, usually we know the z-score, and then look for the corresponding probability. Now we know the probability to the left of the unknown z-score. So we'll have to hunt down in our table for the probability nearest to 0.15, and then from that extract the corresponding z-score. So if you hunt in the probabilities for the nearest one to 0.15, you see right here, there's 0.1515 and then 0.1492. Well, this one's a little closer to 0.15 than this one. So this is the closest one we have to a probability of 0.15. And now from this, we can extract the corresponding z-score. Right? The probability nearest to 0.15 is 0.1492. And the z-score, therefore, is negative 1.0. And now we go up for the second decimal place. Negative 1.04. So you see, with the z-score of negative 1.04, we get a probability of 0.1492. And that is the area to the left. Well, we can't get exactly 0.15, but again, the nearest one is with negative 1.04 for the z-score, which gives us 0.1492. And now we're good to go. We have the z-score, approximately, that's the best we can do from our table, that this value right here is negative. Let's go like this negative 1.04. And now, you see, well, how do we use this picture? Well, think of it. If the z-score, and this is our z-score, right? Our z-score is point, negative point 0.1 times the root of n. And the question is now, how does this z-score compare to this one? 
Well, think of it. We want the area to the right of this point to be at least 85%. Suppose that now the pencil will represent the position of this point along our axis. If our value for negative point 0.1 root of n is exactly negative 1.04, then the area to the right will be exactly 0.85. But we want the area to be bigger than or equal to 0.85. So think of it this way. If you move the point to the right, then you lose area. And then it will be less than 0.85. But we want the area, the area to be at least 0.85. So we have to move our point from negative 1.04. And if we move now it to the left, you see that we actually, to the right, gain area. So our value for the z-score must be to the left of negative 1.04. And to the left, of course, means smaller than. So if our z-score is anything to the left of negative 1.04, say here, then you'll see that we'll get a little more than an area of 0.85, because we'll have this area, which is exactly 0.85, plus the area of this little part. And so we will meet our requirement of having at least an area of 0.85. And now we can solve for our n. Negate both sides, but be careful. If you have, say, negative 3 is less than negative 2, if you negate both sides, you get 3 and 2. And now 3 is bigger than 2. So when you negate both sides of an inequality, you have to flip the inequality. So negate now, you'll have 0 0.1 root of n will be now at least as big as 1.04. Divide by 0.1 across, you'll have root of n will be bigger than or equal to 1.04 over 0 0.1. If you compute this, you'll get 10.4. So root of n will have to be at least as big as 10.4. And now to solve for n, you have to square both sides. And so root of n squared is n, must be at least as big as 10.4 squared. And if you square 10.4, you will get 108.16. And so you see, to meet the requirement that the probability is at least 0.85, n must be at least 108.16. Uh, but if you remember, n was how many rocks we had to weigh. So n is an integer value. So because n is integer, well, the smallest integer bigger than 108.16 is 109. So n must be at least 109. And there you have it. So if we go back to the initial question, The question was, how many rocks do we have to weigh to guarantee that once we compute the average weight of our sample, the probability of the average weight exceeding 19.7 will be at least 0.85? And our final answer was, we have to weigh 109 or more rocks. And if we do so, we will be certain with at least 85% probability that our average will indeed exceed 19.7 pounds.